while the blades of a turbine may be one of the most recognizable features of any wind installation. They also represent one of the largest physical challenges in the manufacturing process. Turbine blades can reach up to 100 meters, 328 feet, in length, and will continue to increase in size as the demand for renewable energy grows and as wind turbines are deployed offshore. Because of their size and aerodynamic complexity, wind turbine blades are skillfully manufactured by hand to ensure the highest level of craftsmanship and to outfit wind turbines with the most reliable and efficient components. An increase in the demand for renewable energy has led to the production of larger turbine blades capable of harnessing more wind energy. This increase in size has brought with it a need for stronger composite materials that effectively retain their shape and strength when subjected to varying wind conditions, as well as other physical and environmental stressors. As the total electrical output of a turbine partially relies upon the efficiency at which air is able to move across a turbine blade, causing the blades to rotate and the gears to spin, it is crucial that the surface quality of each blade stays pristine throughout its lifetime. While an installation site may present a unique obstacle such as ice and frigid temperatures, all blades are typically designed to stand up to constant exposure from the sun, sea, sand, and wind. New composite materials are currently being developed that will increase the lifespan of a turbine blade, improve the manufacturing process, and contribute to the overall efficiency of turbine systems. The Wind Turbine Construction Plant, which now employs more than 600 workers, a number double what it was from just two years ago, didn't always create some of the largest wind turbine blades of today. Ten years ago, around the time the factory was built, Workers were manufacturing wind turbine blades that measured around 37.3 meters. Compare that to the 73.5 meter blades that LM Wind Power now makes, and you'll see it's not just the workforce that's doubled. Each wind turbine blade takes two days and 100 employees to manufacture. The process to assemble a wind turbine is carefully orchestrated. There's a lot to manage, including the wind turbine materials. First, workers make the blades from fiberglass fabric and balsa wood. Then, the blade is covered with an airtight foil, and the team installs a network of tubes that pumps in and distributes the resin that will hold it together. Following that, more work is done on the mold, ensuring that pressure, temperature, and vacuum levels inside are maintained. The team uses lasers to make sure each blade is properly curved. After that, the blade is coated to protect it from dust particles and water droplets, and helping it reach the right speeds.
way wind turbines are made is a process comprising tens of thousands of details. But the result is a product that makes energy passable for millions of people around the world. This is a fascinating and complex process involving cutting-edge technology and meticulous craftsmanship. These towering giants, stretching over 100 meters in some cases, are marvels of engineering that harness the power of the wind to generate clean energy. Let's delve into the intricate world of wind turbine blade manufacturing. Materials Fiber reinforced polymers, FRPs. The mainstay of blade construction, FRPs are typically made of fiberglass or carbon fiber embedded in a resin like epoxy or polyester. These composites offer a unique blend of strength, stiffness, and lightness, crucial for efficient wind energy capture. Balsa wood. This lightweight wood fills the intersections of the blade, providing structural support while keeping weight to a minimum. Other materials. Depending on the design and manufacturer, additional materials like foam cores, metallic inserts, and protective coatings may be used. Process. Molding. The blade's shape is first defined in a massive mold, often made of steel or concrete. Precisely cut layers of FRP and balsa wood are laid within the mold, meticulously following the design contours. Resin infusion or vacuum bagging. Resin is infused into the FRP layers, saturating them and bonding them to the balsa wood core. Alternatively, vacuum bagging techniques may be used to remove air and compact the layers. Curing. The entire assembly is then subjected to heat and pressure in a curing oven, solidifying the resin and transforming the blade into a single, robust structure. Finishing and quality control. Once cured, the blade is meticulously inspected for any flaws or imperfections. The surface is then sanded, painted, and equipped with lightning protection systems and other necessary components. Transportation. Due to their immense size and delicate nature, transporting wind turbine blades is a logistical feat. Specialized trailers and ships are employed to carefully deliver these giants to their wind form destinations. Optimizing the properties of the blades is critical to delivering the needed bending strength and fatigue performance while minimizing cost and weight. The properties of composite blades can be tightly controlled and varied over their span through the appropriate selection of ply orientation, thickness, and layup. Because high hopes are riding on this alternative energy source, the wind turbine blade industry is working hard to improve manufacturing efficiency and address blade failure issues, but challenges remain great and failure rates are as high as 20% within three years.
most causes of failure can be attributed to substandard design and manufacturing practices that could be eliminated by adopting many of the best practices for composites design and manufacturing in the aerospace industry. A significant part of the challenge may be that nearly all composite blades today are designed on basic computer-aided design CAD, systems intended for making solid metal and plastic parts of far less complexity than today's sophisticated, multi-layered composites. The limited capabilities of the traditional CAD systems means that analysis and manufacturing engineering are carried out in separate and disconnected environments, creating inefficiencies and introducing the potential for error. In Europe's most mature markets for wind energy, the first turbines are reaching the end of their operational life. The number of blades that have been decommissioned so far remains low, but it will increase over the coming years. Wind Europe expects around 25,000 tons of blades to reach the end of their operational life annually by 2025. Germany and Spain will see the highest number of decommissioned blades, followed by Denmark. Towards the end of the decade, Italy. France and Portugal will also start to significantly decommission blades, and the annual decommission volume could double to 52,000 tons by 2030. Europe's wind industry actively commits to reuse, recycle, or recover 100% of decommissioned blades. This comes after several industry-leading companies announced ambitious plans for blade recycling and recovery. A landfill ban would further accelerate the development of sustainable recycling technologies for composite materials.